One down. No, not kids. I mean these curtain dealies. I still need to set up, what, like another five of these rigs? God damn it. I hope I don't run out of a green curtain cloth. Shit is expensive. So, uh, what about all those other kids? Huh? Who? Oh, yeah, those people. Aren't they all dead? No, not quite. Oh god, you're right! There are still a few characters I haven't killed yet! I almost forgot about them! I was planning on totally messing with them in the short window of time they're in the same universe as me! Hopefully it isn't too late! Ah! <laughs> Wait, why am I even laughing? This is a completely inappropriate reaction. Besides, I am a tin can. Robots don't have feelings. Hussybot, check time. Let's see. They should be traveling near the speed of light across a distance of one yard, giving them about three nanoseconds before they crash through the other wall, which means I have about... Holy shit, I'm almost out of time to fuck up the story! Who would have thought nanoseconds could fly by so fast? Hussybot, hurry! Who am I kidding? Even using my super-fast robotic author avatar, I barely have time to do anything. Maybe I'll just level up these kids before they go, and that's it. They've earned it after all, don't you think? John, level up. You produce your most spirited lad scramble yet, and hop up to the next god tier, achieving the illustrious Revenge of Dr. Ragnarok. All of your vitals go completely bonkers! Your man grit is off the charts! You're embarrassed for us to even know what it is! It's that gaudy. Jade, level up. You put forth your best last scamper of all time and clear another sweet god tier. The nigh unattainable Sayonara, Kansas. Your battle stats predictably go haywire. You accrue so much youngster gumption, it's basically insane. Nobody should ever mess with you. Not even me. John and Jade, weep spoils. You don't get boon dollars anymore. That shit is for babies now. Instead, you are finally ready to have your first achievement badge sewn onto your kitty camper handy sash. You each receive the badge Gift of Gab, enabling you to engage in simple direct dialogue with others without requiring any gimmicks to facilitate communication. You don't need to type through a chat client or talk to a sprite or traverse through a memory in a dream bubble or wander around in an interactive game environment or any of that stuff. You seriously never thought you would live to see this achievement unlocked. It almost feels like cheating, like conversing in god mode. Act 6, Intermission 1 Where are we? I'm not sure. Some sort of limbo dimension between the two walls, I guess. Like a realm with unusual spatial properties we have to cross through. Oh, okay. Then... We escaped the Scratch? Like, we still exist and everything. Yes, we still totally exist, John. Okay, just making sure. I still felt pretty existy, but you never know. I'm still kind of confused, though. About what? I mean, we crashed through that giant window you magically made with witch powers to escape the Scratch, so we can keep existing, right? Yes, I didn't make it with witch powers, though. I kept it locked in hours ago because Carcat told me to. Then, at the last minute, I took it out and made it huge so we could escape through it. I see. Did you at least make it huge with witch powers? I did make it huge with witch powers! So I guess that's what witch powers do. Is make things huge? They also make things small. Right, like you did with all those planets. Yep. Also, witch powers can teleport things, and fling things around through space at very high velocities. All sorts of stuff! But, to be honest, I'm not sure how much of that is attributable to inheriting Dex abilities. Man, spacey witch powers sound a lot more versatile than my powers, frankly. Not that I'm complaining because wind powers are still awesome, but anyway, that is neither here nor there. What I'm wondering is, once we crash through that window, weren't we supposed to, like, enter a new game session, the reset one, and meet up with Karkad, Vriska, and, like, the trolls, and I guess maybe also a bunch of dead trolls too, like, troll ghosts or such? Yes, and that was the basic idea. And what about your grandson? Wasn't he going to be there from the future or something, and then he would send Liv Tyler to me, or actually to you, I guess, and to the past somehow? That would be Jake. And yeah, I do believe we will meet him in this session. He said he had a bunch of friends who helped him make the bunny. I'm pretty excited to meet them all. Wow. Hey, I wonder what the fuck ever happened to Liv anyway. Last I saw her, I sent her off to give the tumor to Rose and Dave. Oh god, Rose and Dave! Where are they now? 
Did one of them do the suicide mission thing? And what about the other? Did they get scratched? Actually, they both went. And in a manner of speaking, their mission was a success. Mm -hmm. So they blew up the sun and now they're dead? Nope. They did not actually destroy the sun. Trust me, I would know if it was gone. Now that I know what I know, it was kind of silly of us to think it would ever be destroyed. And, as it happens, Rose and Dave are not dead either. I received very reliable reports that they survived. Oh man, that's great. I mean, I'm not sure how not blowing up the sun qualifies as a successful mission, since that was kind of the whole idea, but at this point, I don't really care. I'm just happy to hear they're okay. It will all be more clear soon. How do you know they're okay, or any of this, really? I've learned a lot in my dreams lately. <laughs> Probably more than I ever learned looking at the clouds on Prospect. When I was dead there for a few minutes, I had one last very informative nap. The bottom line is, Rose and Dave will rendezvous with the trolls near the green sun, and then they will all meet us in the new session! Okay, that sounds awesome. And that was part of the plan I guess I understood, but where is the new session? All I see is a bunch of giant windows and a lot of warp speedy wishy nonsense. It's through the other wall! You mean that one way over there? Yes. Okay, so is this place that yellow lawn ring thing Carcat was talking about? No, not a lawn ring. That's a silly troll word. It's the yellow yard. We have to cross it to break through the next wall. How is that a yellow yard? That's a stupid name for this place. See that long yellow band down there? Stretching between the two walls? I think that's supposed to be the yard. That's not a yard. Yards are like these flat, wide patches of grass surrounded by fences and stuff. If anything, it's more like a road. Huh. Yeah. I think you're right. Kinda like the yellow brick road. Sure, why not? Let's all go see a big pompous wizard to solve all our problems. I bet Rose would get a kick out of that. <laughs> oh yeah, and another thing. What the fuck is that? Um... I have no idea. Extra-dimensional shenanigan-based phenomena, perhaps? Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain cloth. Or anything taking place out here in the Emerald Chitty paint job, for that matter. Wait, what just happened? I don't know. It got darker and greener. Huh. This place is weird. When are we gonna bust through the other window anyway? I'm kind of antsy to get on with our adventure and meet up with everybody. Yes, me too. Hmm. What is it? I'm just trying to estimate our arrival time. Based on our current velocity, which is about as close to light speed as I can make it go. I see. Since we are going so fast, it should be pretty soon, right? Like a few more minutes? Hmm... No. It'll take quite a bit longer than that. Uh... How long? I would say... If I keep our speed constant, we should arrive in about... three years? What? That is an absolutely preposterous amount of time! I know! Are you sure you can't make it go any faster? I mean... Not to sound too demanding, but didn't you say you can teleport stuff? Why not teleport us there? I can't. Not here, at least. Aw, oh, well that sucks. Why not? The way I understand it is, Bex's powers draw from the green sun, and the green sun presides over our universe. Many universes, actually, and the sessions that created them, as well as the sessions created within them, including the Trolls universe and their session. Think of it like a giant solar system. But instead of planets revolving around the sun, there are many universes! Uh, okay. That sounds... big. It is! So Beck was able to teleport anywhere in the universe he wanted to in an instant, much faster than light. Jack was able to do this too within our session, and then when I inherited those powers from Jade Sprite, so could I. But we could only teleport locally, which means Beck could jump to anywhere in our universe, but not to another universe or into a session. And Jack could jump to anywhere in our session, but not outside it. We can't even jump to the green sun itself, even though we sort of serve as a gateway to it in all its energy. And once we leave the sun's domain, our travel is limited by the speed of light, like everyone else. For example, the furthest ring is not in the sun's domain. It is more like the sun's medium allowing it to exist. So if I wanted to fly out of our session and travel to the green sun, I would have to make my way there through the furthest ring at the speed of light or less. And wherever we are now is not in the sense to me neither. So the same rules apply. I see. It didn't really occur to me. This was also a labyrinth. Like, if the green sun is the center of a bunch of universes, like a huge solar system, does that mean it was sort of important? Maybe trying to blow it up wasn't such a great idea. Yes, I think you're right. 
But to be fair, we were all the victims of a big prank. Oh man, a prank? Who pranked us? Some really creepy omniscient guy. It doesn't matter much, he's supposedly dead now. Oh well, that was quite a ruse though, that son of a bitch. Yes, but it's not all as bad as it seems. There's a silver lining in all of this. Like you said, a sun presiding over many universes has to be pretty cosmically important. Who knows what terrible consequences there would be if it was destroyed? Or maybe worse, if it never existed at all. Which is what made Rose and Dave's true mission an unintended success. Their true mission? What was that? To deliver the bomb to the empty location the green sun was meant to exist for most of eternity. And then, create the sun in the first place! That is what the tumor was for all along! Hmm. Like I said, we got played like a bunch of suckers! Oh man, Rose and Dave have sweet gods here pajamas like us! That's so awesome! <laughs> Dave looks kinda like a doofus with that snug little hood. I think he looks cool! The cape is great! He looks like a superhero now! That's true. I still think I prefer my outfit, though. Look at all those trolls! There's so many trolls, the idea of meeting them all is kind of overwhelming. I wonder which one is which? I think that one must have been Carcat there, and that was probably his clown asshole friend he mentioned, too. Yep. And that was definitely Terezi with the fancy glasses. Not sure about the others. I wonder if Risco is there. Uh... It's nice to see Rose looks better. Last time I saw her, she looked really grim and also dark. I was trying to talk to her, but she sounded like a babbling monster, so I couldn't understand her. It was really frustrating, and all my nervous rambling probably made me sound like an idiot. And then when I woke up later, she was dead. Hmm... Did you know that I had to kiss her to make her come back to life? Huh? Yes, it's true. It's kind of weird kissing a dead body, but I didn't mind. How'd you feel about it when you kissed David? he died? Uh... How did you know about that? Garcat told me. Oh... Not figures. Do you think that all of our unbridled corpse smooching means Carcat's silly shipping prophecy will come true? Um... I mean, the guy is really angry and says fuck like in practically every sentence, but he does weirdly seem to know what he's talking about when it comes to romance. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want it to come true? Man, I don't know, do you? Hmm... Hmm, indeed. I think I missed some already. And we've only been here for a few minutes. Yeah, there's a lot I want to talk to them about, and a lot I want to ask them. Well, you could ask them now if you want. Really? Yes. In fact, you can hop right through me and join them. Then you can travel with them to the new session if you like. Whoa! Well, heck! Why don't we do it then? It would probably be more fun with them than just being on this golden battleship by ourselves. It probably would, but I can't go with you. I can serve as a gateway, but I can't travel to the sun myself, remember? Oh yeah, damn it! 
But it's okay, really. If that's what you wanted to do, I wouldn't mind. But whatever you do, you have to decide quickly. They will be departing from the set very soon. I don't want to leave you here all alone for three years. That would suck. I wouldn't really be alone, though. I have the population of five planets to keep me company. Ah, uh, that's right. That makes it seem not so boring, I guess. But still, I feel really bad leaving you here, even if you do have a million salamanders and chess guys to keep you company. You're my friend and also my sort of sister, and we just met for the first time ever a few minutes ago. I'm not going to be like, well, see you in three years, Jade. Aww. Okay, then. Personally, I think this trip could be a lot of fun. There's no pressure to do anything important or run around like lunatics anymore. We can just relax. Yeah, now that you mentioned I'm pretty beat. Also, starving. What? Whoops. <laughs> I sure hope there's a lot of things to eat on those planets. There are a lot of weird-going mushrooms on Loas, but I don't know about those. I seem to remember a bunch of farms on the battlefield. There should be lots of good stuff on the planets. Also, I would bet the ship is stocked with plenty of military rations. Yeah, probably. Hell, I could just raid all of our fridges and alchemize some tasty grub. Oh, yeah! Durr, problem solved. Okay, cool, but it would still be nice to say hi to everyone before they leave. Just to let them know how we're doing. Yes! Like, one of the last things Rose saw before she died was me dying. I wonder if she knows I'm okay. I'm pretty sure she knows a ton of things now, considering she's a fully realized seer of light. Yeah, probably. Then maybe I'll just hop over real fast, give Karkat a fist bump, and give Dave a hard time about his hella tight little hood, and then hop back? I'm sure that would be hilarious, but if you go, I don't think I could bring you back. I can't bring anyone or anything to hear from there. Aw, oh, man, really? As far as I know, if there's a way I haven't figured it out yet, I am still kind of new at this omnipotence thing after all. That's stupid. What is with all these rules? I don't know. I'm sure the rules exist for a good reason, though. Maybe to somewhat limit the power and reach of omnipotent beings? If there are no limits at all, it could be especially dangerous in the wrong hands. Like what happened with Jack. Isn't that a contradiction, though? If there are limits to your powers, you can't exactly be omnipotent, can you? More like... semi-potent. Then I guess that's what we are. Semi-potent demigods. Demi-dogs. Woof, woof, woof! Damn it! <laughs> Can you not control the woofs? I haven't gotten the hang of the woofs yet. So, the dog ears, is that a permanent thing now or what? I think so. I like them. I do too! You're like a furry now, but not the weird kind that people on the internet like to have sex with in their imagination. Uh... Hey, can I at least send a message though? Like, a note or something? Sure! Better hurry up and write it though! Okay, snap, gotta think quick. Uh, what I write on? Maybe the back of a movie poster or something. I don't think I have one capture log, though. And now that I think about it, most of them were ruined by imps. How about this one? Looks like it's still in pretty good condition. Yes, this is perfect. Everyone will love it, especially probably Dave. I think I need something to fold it up and put it in, though. I don't want to just, like, crumple it up and chuck it in there like some garbage. I could stick it in a book, I guess, but I kinda don't want to part with any of this great reading material, especially since we're going on a long trip. John, you have to hurry! Okay, okay, um... Here, will this work? Oh yeah, I guess that'll be fine. Now, uh, what's a right? Whatever you write, just make it quick. And tell everyone I said hi. Okay, will do. Okay, while you work on that, I think I'll bring up some friends. Huh? You know, let some of our travel companions get acquainted with the ship. Oh fuck, it's Dave Sprite! I forgot about him. Yeah, no shit. How have you been, buddy? Shush! Right now, catch up later! Okay, I think this is a pretty good letter. Let me check it out. Maybe I'll humorously defile Willis's and Affleck's dumb skyward yearning faces. Oh, hell no! Come on, dude, hand it over. Oh, come on, guys! They're about to go! Just stuff it in the bucket and throw it at me already! Too late. I already did it with sprite powers while he wasn't looking. Ugh, you bastard. Wait a minute. I forgot trolls hate cleaning products for some alien reason. Shit, that's gonna make everyone so uncomfortable. Oh well, there it goes. Too late, I guess. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs>